Anytime we grip a weapon, people will tend to prioritize using the thumb and the first two fingers. The primary reason for that is that these are our main interfacing fingers. If you think about daily life, if you have to pick up something small and precise, a piece of change, your car keys, you'll tend to favor those top three digits. If I have to hold a fork or a knife, again, primarily those three. Chopsticks, those three. Opening doorknobs, mostly those three. The bottom ones oftentimes get in the way or just support at most. But we tend to have this perception that these first fingers are the most important. And so naturally when we interface with a weapon for the first time, we seek it. People will touch a blade with their thumb or with their index finger. They'll pick it up primarily with their index finger. And they will blister along the expanse of the index finger and the thumb web because they over contract with that. But in actuality, the bottom two fingers along with the meat of the thumb are actually the essence to all grips. If I grab a weapon and I over prioritize the top, what I'll start to see is that people will now begin to pinky out because they will fundamentally have too much contraction at the top and they will not cultivate enough dynamic uh, stretch, uh, flexibility and strength in their wrist and they'll tend to compensate by bringing the fingers up. In this case, I'm not using a shashka. This is actually a World War II naval cutlass, uh, but it's a, uh, a extremely sharp blade, and it's uh, I prefer it. It's got a slightly thinner blade, which is like a shin gunto or a war era katana. Uh, but fundamentally, aside from it being a little bit narrower than a than a, um, a shashka, it has all the same uh, criteria, and it moves in exactly the same way. And I just pre uh, prefer this one. Um, all of them will tend to have this option of either having a handle with a small protrusion at the base in the pommel and with or without a guard. Same thing with shashkas. Shashkas very often in traditional Cossack work are seen without guards, but when we start to get into uh, World War I, World War II era, we start to see guards becoming more and more popular, like the one that I have here. The shashka that I have here is just a little bit in bad shape and a bit rusty and embarrassing to show on camera, uh, so that's why I'm not using that one. But even if we, we take away this guard, we need to realize that while the guard can, to some degree, facilitate retention, it's fundamentally there to help uh, block and protect the hand. What really is serving is this small little indentation at the base because that's what's going to hook my pinky and allow me to have this very long blade. As far as swords go, cutlasses and shashkas are fairly light. If we compare it to like a Christian broadsword or something like that, um, it's, it's a fairly light blade. But in exchange for that lightness, we are, we are now gripping usually quite low. We do not have a large uh, pommel or counterbalance and extra length in the handle like a, a bastard or two-handed sword might have and so the, the, the sword will be held quite low but that makes it even more dependent on wrist flexion and specifically this contraction here. This contraction in the lower fingers is something that allows me to maintain grip so while my pinky may stretch up like melted cheese it should not ever release and very often you'll see people when they're working twirling and having the hand all the way open like this. With a sword or with a weighted stick, uh, it doesn't feel as comfortable because we start to realize that these fingers are what counterbalance the entire length of the weapon. These fingers are the counterbalance and the crux of my thumb, the web of my thumb, is the, the actual fulcrum. And this entire length of weapon is a very long lever. So if I let those pinkies go up and I try to just lift with my, my first two fingers, I actually have very little strength. But when I get into something like a stick, you'll often see people lose that awareness because the stick is so light, especially if it's in rattan. And people will start to twirl like this, with the finger and the hand very open. You'll see this a lot in stunt work, you'll see this a lot in like musical kata and demonstrations. And the reason for that is that it, it, it creates a very fast flick, it's effortless, it requires no conditioning. But it's horrible form. It is horrible form. Even if you watch traditional Cossack work where people are performing all sorts of crazy spins and, and, and deflections and movements and warm-up patterns, fundamentally when they come down to cutting, the cut is singular, precise, and pure. And it is done with a straight line of attack and with a very solid and certain grip. So we're going to be looking throughout this download at the role of the ornate. Is it just for mobility training? Does it also serve a tactical purpose? Where should it begin and where should it end? But in all cases, what we want to make sure is that we understand our grip. I've, I've discussed this in one of my downloads before. These bottom fingers are regarded as being so important that if you look at a traditional sword culture like Japan, in Japan, uh, the, the typical punishment for many crimes was to cut off the pinky finger. 
It's still widely used in the, with the Yakuza, the Japanese organized crime rings, um, because this notion that if you have no pinky, you, you fundamentally violate and destroy that person's ability to grip a sword. That's the origin of that motion, because they recognize that, uh, of that, that idea, that notion, because they recognize that the pinky was so fundamental to grip strength and to sword sufficiency and proficiency that without it, you would suffer drastically. So think for a minute, if that's considered the ultimate insult or the ultimate handicap, how, how important, how primary that pinky was understood to be in that culture. I've said it before as well that my sword teacher originally and Japanese sword work said that the pinky was 100% of the grip, the ring finger was 75, middle was 50, the index finger was maybe 25, primarily pointing. And uh, everything was really about having good strength in the bed of the hand. So the very first thing we're going to look at is how can we condition correct strength and grip in the hand and then how can we then begin to cultivate strong load-bearing flexibility.